I'm not actually making this poppet for anything, so I don't need to keep it as tight as I have been. Just force of habit for the most part. I'm gonna go ahead and speed that up because this video is starting to get quite a bit longer than I originally planned. So, let's see, what have we not covered? We've covered how to use a poppet to some degree. Now, what to do with the poppet once you have it made. We haven't discussed that much besides with yourself. Like I said, you can put it in protection spells, but you can do that with anybody. You can put protection spells on them, cast glamour, cast uh, any type of curse where you're just directly cursing a person. You can do that. Of course, there's more the, the more traditional method of, or cliche method of literally putting a pin in the person. Now, you can't just walk up and stick a pin in there. You need to do it with intent. You need to have a statement of intent when you stick the pin. Like if you put one in someone's eyes, it isn't going to just, ah, oh, my eye hurts. You need to say that I place this pin within your eyes to blind your vision. Then it's going to keep them from seeing things. Might even, well, it could have a very direct effect, usually doesn't usually that sort of thing just makes the person not notice things very well and makes them kind of well blind to what is going on. I have seen at least one case where it did literally affect the person's vision and they were really having trouble seeing for a few days until well until I had mercy and fixed that but it can be quite effective. And so you do need to be very careful with the poppets. And you can use them to heal people as well by, uh, well, healing spells. Any healing works, like directed energy work, even. It's not going to be quite as effective as if you had the person right there in front of you. But if you have a well-linked poppet, you can do healing energy work directly onto the doll. To affect the person remotely. So if you have someone that you are doing a lot of energy work for and for some reason you're going to have to be away from them for a period of time, especially if they help you make that poppet, it will be very connected to them and you can call them, tell them to be ready and even do a video call nowadays actually because it's how long it's been since I did that. This uh, video calls weren't a thing back in those days. But you can use a poppet to work on someone remotely. And it works much better if they know when it's happening so that they can open themselves up to it. Which is also why if you were making a voodoo doll of someone, poppet. I'm not, are we not supposed to be using the other word? If you make a poppet of someone and you were going to hex them, a lot of people say, oh, don't let them know, with curse work in general even, that they, that they try to avoid the other person knowing. Me, my advice, let them know. Especially if you have a doll and you can make some way for them to have seen the doll and know that you have a doll of them. Find some way to remind them. Let them know every time you're working on it or with it. Because fear is a very strong motivator. And most people will react at least with some fear towards that. And even if they do take protective measures, unless they know what they are doing and respond confidently and without fear, then really all any of them actions are doing is opening them up and allowing you access through their fear, AKA their belief that they can or are being harmed. And with any curse work that you're doing on, a, on another person, 
All that stuff about material links, it's all very useful, very important. But the most important thing is to get the person to cooperate by accepting that they are cursed. Okay, so when you get to about here, see how the side of the head and the arm are all not sewn yet? You're going to stop. You're going to go to that spot, and you're just going to do a bunch of stitches close together in one place. Then you leave the thread there. You don't cut that. And you take the doll, and you turn it inside out. Now, I did make it rather thin, so that makes this... The larger you make this doll... See, I'm just turning it inside out here. That was the thing of needles. Just got to get it all turned inside out here to have a better thread. And this is the part that's actually kind of a pain in the butt. And you know what? We are going to cut that. There are tricks to where you can get away with not cutting that, but you don't have to. And it actually makes it more of a pain in the butt when you're turning, in some, turning inside out something this small. So, we just get this thing turned inside out. Like so. You just work on the bits, like the arm. You pull it inside out and then you grab it and you roll it forward. If you have trouble with that, you can take a stick or something and poke in there, but you just roll it, squeeze it and roll it like that until it's all the way out like that. You got to do that with all of them. Where it's got that uh, indented part, it's going to be a little difficult. The other thing you can do is you can get it in the middle here on the inside and just pull it. Kind of squeeze and pull, squeeze and pull, and just get it through. Squeeze and pull. Squeeze and pull. Just like that. Just keep going. Squeeze and pull, squeeze and pull. Sometimes the feet can be a real bugger. Looks like they're gonna go. But like I said, if you have difficulty with the squeeze and pull and the roll, you can take a little stick, shove it down in there and poke. Be gentle. The tighter your your stitching is, the more you, the harder you can poke because it's tighter together. Now, if you've done a really loose stitch like I have on some of this, because we were in a hurry, avoid the stick the most you can and just stick to the squeeze and roll. It's just like this. Or just Squeeze and pull on the other side. And you just got to get them out enough that you can get stuff in there. Because once you start getting cotton in there, that helps as well. Okay, we've got an arm left here that needs to get through. And it's the first arm, so it won't be... It, I can really... I can really fight with it. And it'll come in. Here, will you... I'll, I'll demonstrate with the scissors about this... What I was talking about with the stick technique. So you get on the end here, on the inside, and just push. That one's sewn really tightly, so I don't have to worry. It's not going to tear on me. Okay, and then you got this. Inside right, goofy looking, barely humanoid shape, but that's all that matters. Oh! Just so you know, I'm not always completely competent at this. There is another type of poppets, and I wanted to show you those as well. Um, this is, you remember my dog, Cootie. We discussed how she passed. And I did, I believe I already, I've already shown her poppet, but here is her poppet again. It is stuffed completely with her hair, and it keeps her close to me. Um, it also has her collar on here, which are her tags from her collar, which she was very attached to. And... This is 
more than just a memento, this is something where I really need to fill my dog because I, well, I miss my dog. <laughs> I can hold this puppet and just think about her. And it brings me to her, brings that connection, and can actually, if I w were to work with her in that way, draw her spirit to me, or at least her call through the puppet. This is another way of making a call, is to, if I were to fully inflate this, at times I do begin to feel her presence and actually begin to see her through this doll. Okay, so like I said, we just got some filler here. You just, you just take and shove it down in. And this is another part where you might need a stick and if you've stitched way too thin, you could have a problem. Like I've actually kind of got a little bit right there, but that's okay. And you just want to work that stuff down in, that same squish, squishing technique I talked before. You're doing that again, but from the inside and just pushing and squeezing. Pushing and squeezing, getting it all in there. You only need to get enough into each thing to make them pop out. Like, or stay, uh, you know, until they don't look flat. If you wind up using paper like I'm using, another thing you can do is, see how I twisted that into there? And that helps you get that first bit in. And you shove the rest in there. And you just fill the doll now. Okay, a little bit more. And then of course there's the bit we haven't sewn yet. So, you get that most of the way filled. Looks like I'm gonna have to thread this needle again after all. So we're gonna have to put up with me doing that one more time. Okay, so. So we thread the needle. The trick is to get it in the very center. You want to get it to as fine a point as possible. Slide it through there like that. And grab the other side of the needle and pull it through. I'm going to go ahead and take a nice long piece because we're going to be done by this one. There we go. Keep them even. Tie the knot. And then pick up right where you left off, and you're going to sew it most of the way closed, leaving a little bit of a hole to finish off the little bit that hasn't been stuffed yet, because of how you, how you uh, like how we leave the whole head. So basically we're going to sew the head closed now. Well, most of the way closed, fill the head, and then fill it the rest of the way. So I'll show you again when we get to that point. See, and that's what you want to avoid. Luckily, I'm not bleeding, and it's just a uh, demonstration one. But like I said earlier, if you are making a puppet of someone besides yourself, and you bleed on it, you will have to start all over. You cannot have your own blood, any of your own blood on a puppet that is for somebody else, or it will affect you too. You can make a puppet to represent a group of people. If you have a bit of each person's hair, or... A drop of every, each person's blood on the doll. Now, there's a few other things to talk about that we're not going to be doing in this demonstration because I just didn't go through go through all the. Uh, I don't want to actually connect the doll to anyone. I don't know whose scarf this was originally, etc. But once you've completely made the doll, you are then going to create other connections. So when you fully made the doll. The first thing you're going to do is call it by the person's name and breathe on it and greet them. Then you will write their name on the doll and you will also 
write down as much of their astrological information on the doll as best you can. So their date of birth, their full name, what their uh, zodiac symbol is. If you know their full chart, what you would do is there is a shape made. When you do someone's birth chart with the circle, there is a shape made as the lines follow. You take that, you take that shape itself and draw it on the back. And I have found that to be an extremely powerful connection. Of course, you'd have to know the person's whole birth chart to be able to do that. But a lot of times with these poppets, this should be consensual work. This is something that you can be doing for clients to create a direct link to be able to work with them. And if it's a, a client that you have on a regular basis, I highly recommend making a poppet of that client so that you have it to work with from time to time. Oh, here we go with the... I did one of those loops again. Even on the outside, they're not that big of a deal, but that is one reason why you probably shouldn't get more thread than you need, less having to deal with that malarkey. Okay, so, so most of the head shut. And then you take that last little hole there to fill the head. So there's just one little hole there at the head, see? And you take and you fill the head full. Looks like I have a blowout from poor, uh, from the quick stitching that I did. So we'll take care of that while we're coming around. Because you that's the one thing. Um, if you have the best, if you do the quick stitch, and because it's just how you have to do it because you were in a hurry, and then you wind up using that doll more than you thought, you know, you can repair the doll. You can come back around and do stitching from the outside. It's going to be a little more visible, but it's not like you're making these doll to be marketed as, as a hobby craft, yeah? You're not going to try and sell this thing on Etsy. So don't stress too much about it if it doesn't look exactly like you want it to by the end. No big deal, not a problem. And if you need to uh, do some repair work from the outside because you didn't stitch so well the first time around, again, no big deal. Just a happy little poppet with his happy little trees, you know. Just think of Bob Ross with his paintings, same idea. Happy little accidents. Anything funky that comes up with the doll, if it's someone that you're trying to uh, do Malignant work for? Well, I mean, that's fine. Helps p p helps twist their form out of shape. Good thing, not a bad thing. Don't want their doll to be pretty if you're trying to uh, do damage to them. And if it's someone who you're caring for, protecting, well, you care about them anyways, and you, did, you just do your best. Do not worry too much about how it turns out as far as its appearance. Yes, it's nice to have a pretty, pretty doll. And that's part of the reason I use the yarn ones, because I have better skill with that than I do with this particular thing, especially doing it this quick. But, in a moment here, we will have our finished product. And again, when you finally stop, do that same knot that same stitch a few times in almost exactly the same spot just to keep things good and secure. Okay. So, here's our... Let me put that needle somewhere where it's not going to get lost. Here is our finished poppet. Certainly not an ideal one, but that gives you an idea of just, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to have their sample in there, and then once you get it, you speak to it as if it was their name. From that point on, you treat the poppet as if it were them when you are interacting with it. You write their name, astrological symbol, date of birth. If they have any nicknames, you write, the, write them on there as well. And if, like I was saying with some of the other stuff that I have done, if you want to affect this person in a particular area, like in their social scene, then that is the name you write on this doll. Yeah, if their name's Peter Paul Harvey, but in the scene they go by Scriggs, then 
Colin Scriggs when you get it. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you once again for joining us. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please take the opportunity to do so now. Until next time, bright blessings and an interesting fate. This has been Sorcerer Tao.